Thank you very much for joining us again. Um, Derek, what is your response to this judgment? We know that uh, uh, the former president, in uh, a recent discussion with his son on the uh, podcast Zooming with Zoomers, uh, said he doesn't really uh, believe that any uh, judge in South Africa is going to judge him fairly. He compared them to apartheid judiciary. Uh, what is your response to the judgment? Well, clearly, I welcome the judgment. Um, I think, you know, justice is being done. Um, the, and it's not surprising because there was absolutely no basis for what he had been alleging. And clearly, I mean, it was ruled that it was highly inflammatory, highly defamatory. Um, and so uh, I, I feel vindicated. Uh, but I also want to, you know, get the, the chapter closed. I think there are more important things that we should be applying our attention to and our energy to. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, the matter had to be taken up because you can't allow individuals to get, especially people in that position, the former president of the country, president of the ANC, make statements of this nature and let these statements go unchallenged. Now, you know, his, his lawyers argued, obviously, and lost at the time, um, that when, when he said known enemy agent, he wasn't referring to you potentially being an apartheid spy, um, and he's never questioned your um, struggle credentials, credentials, rather. He was suggesting you were an enemy, perhaps, of the ANC for meeting with the EFF to discuss a motion of no confidence against him. That never held water, right? Did you never think, maybe he's got a point? No, I, I never for one moment thought he had a point because the and that's exactly exactly what Judge Pillay ruled initially, is that there could be no other interpretation of his use of the word known enemy agent other than it's referring to a public spy. And, you know, given it giving it further context, by the way, Sally, um, he referred to Marco Ramathodi and Tupiwe and Yanda directly as a public spies after they gave testimony at the Zondo Commission. So, I mean, there's a context, mm. and uh, I think it's reasonable to assume, and that is the way the, the court interpreted it, that the, it meant nothing other than, you know, refer, you know alleging that I was in a public spy. Of course, in, in, the, in the court's proceedings, um, the, um, it was argued by them themselves that, no, he, he wasn't uh, questioning my credentials, and, um, and they, they, they themselves then said, no, they weren't alleging that I was in a pocket spy, but the judge ruled that it could only be interpreted as such. Right. I have to ask, because I know that he has to make a public apology to you, uh, but he has to delete the tweet. Last time we checked, he hadn't done so, and pay damages. Any signal from him that he's going to do any of those at this point? Well, I, uh, you know, from, from the lawyers representing me, the, the, the last discussion I had with him, they had no contact with Mr. Zuma's lawyers. Uh, but yes, that is exactly the ruling. He will have to delete that tweet. Uh, that tweet, which, by the way, is still being retweeted by a number of the people who are loosely described, probably described as bots, um, people, the kind of people that have been exposed by Amar Bungane. But be it as it may, um, he is uh, obliged to delete that tweet, issue a public apology, and then pay damages. The damages are still to be determined by a hearing held by the judge. Uh, so the, the, the final amount of damages has not yet been determined, but he would have to pay damages, publicly apologize, and delete the tweet. Well, thank you very much. That is a vindicated former tourism minister, Derek Hanukom, joining us on the line from Cape Town.